This world has been connected, tied to the darkness, soon to be completely eclipsed. Hello there, Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Proud Difficulty video walkthrough. This is heading towards Monstro, or heading towards a world that's going to then lead us to Monstro. And I was looking on some forums the other day, and there's a lot of people discussing the Speedster trophy. Uh, they're making it out to be much harder than it is. Like, I don't understand these people who, you know, kind of overanalyze the situation and completely fear it. In a game, like in life it happens and it's natural, but in a game, like they, they fear it before they've even tried it. And don't get me wrong, there are certain things to be feared, you know. Harder difficulties that are super hard are intimidating and you know you've just kind of got to grit your teeth and, and bear the grind but like just an intimidating sounding trophy doesn't have to be you know this dire situation that has to be discussed and dissected in forums before you even attempt it because I wasn't trying to beat this game in under 15 hours it just happened the only time I was trying was when I got to the end of the game at like 14 hours and realized hey I can get that speedster trophy and it'll make the guide a little bit more interesting if I do that was it, you know, there was no planning. I was just playing the game. So, these people that are all like, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to look into this, I've got to practice this. It's like, no, just, you know, just do your thing and you'll get it. And they were talking about skipping Monstro. And apparently, when you get to Monstro, you can immediately leave and skip it. But how can you skip a level that has Riku in it? Like, there are plot points in Monstro that if you didn't see, the game wouldn't make much sense. So I really don't think you can skip it. Like, I'm sure you can leave and stuff, but I don't think it can be skipped. I think you have to do it. And uh, even if you can skip it, why, why would you? It's so quick and easy. Like, the boss is a bit of a pain in the ass, because I don't have a good strategy on how to not get hurt. But that's just because it's one of those bosses that's kind of stupid, really. But as opposed to Halloween Town and Atlantica, you can definitely skip one of those. And I think the logical person is always going to skip Atlantica because it's the one that takes the longest. Like, Halloween Town can be really quick if you know what you're doing. But here comes Monstro. He's about to eat us. But uh, I went with my girlfriend to our local township today. And I went trying to look for a few things and just to go on a little bit of a mini adventure, you know, get some food, you know, just just do something I haven't done in a while. And I went into a game place, which is essentially, if you can imagine, you know, imagine a graveyard of electronics, a place where everything gets collected and hoarded and put on shelves. And it's one of those, you know, really barren places where there's so much stuff and it's stacked to the ceiling and it's everywhere, it's all the time that you really have to sit down and delve into it to even find anything remotely clear to what you want. And that's what this place is. And they have a gaming section that's, you know, it's, it's really stacked, but it's, it's stacked with just ignorance. Because you've got PlayStation 2 games getting sold for more than Xbox 360 games, and Xbox 360 games that are really new getting sold for less than really old ones. And I'm not talking ones that actually have value, I'm talking just a, a fluctuation of inconsistent prices because the people that run it really don't know the value of some of the things. They're kind of winging it and you know, winging it badly in areas. And I went today to look for a multitude of things and I didn't come away with fucking anything. It was hilarious and I had no intentions of buying anything but I would have liked to at least price checked because I'm one of those people that I like to check all the different online stores to see, you know, what the just what the baseline is of prices and, and things like that before I purchase things because you know, it's just a much more intelligent approach than just whimsically buying things because you get ripped off all the time guys it's fucking stupid but I had a price range in my head that I'd seen online for, for new versions of what I wanted pre-owned versions of what I wanted and one of the things I was looking for was Kingdom Hearts 2 for the PlayStation 2 which is a game that I bought the day it came out and I can't find it in my house anywhere. And I want to play it because I'm in a Kingdom Hearts mood. But I can't find it. So I thought I'll have a look out for it. See if I can grab it. Grab it for cheap. Because it should give, an, give or take be around 10 quid. That is the going price for that game. It should be less because it's old as fuck. But you know what these places are like. They'll try and rob you. 
I must have looked through five bookcases. And I'm talking, imagine the bookcase, the, the size of a door in its height, and maybe four or five doors stacked side by side in length, filled with PS2 games. I saw fucking all sorts. I saw Shinobi, which is a PS2 action game that was really good, but it had a shit camera, and I played the demo and really didn't like it. I saw everything. Like Tenshu, Silent Assassin, this. And just just a, a ton of games, like so many games. But that wasn't one of them. And I scoured all of these shelves to look for it, couldn't find a damn sight of it. So I thought I'll look for some other Kingdom Hearts games, seeing as I'm in the mood. So I looked for the, the DS version and the 3DS versions of those games. Couldn't find a single thing. Found everything else, you know, bloody Professor Layton this, Professor Layton that. Just nothing, absolutely nothing. So I thought I'll have a look to see what the PSPs are in this place. And they had a PSP Street, which I think is like a more recent PSP, like a lighter version, maybe. I'm not too sure entirely. Second hand, boxed, 70 quid. Like I've seen PSPs brand new for 50. And they were the slim ones, like the most recent ones. So it just it's just kind of baffling that you can try and sell that second hand. Especially when you've got so many of the bastards, because they're clearly not selling, because you're selling them for a price that's not really realistic. So I'm like, that's okay, I, you know, I'm not going to purchase it. So I thought I'd look through some PSP games to look for Birth by Sleep, which is another Kingdom Hearts game that I haven't played. And lo and behold, they didn't have that either. So the final thing that I wanted in this big mass graveyard of electronics was an extension cord with surge protection on it. I wanted a nice, you know, 8 gang extension cord, nice big thing, and I was willing to pay about 10, 10 to 20 quid for it, because I use my plugs quite a lot for electronic devices, I have had plugs and extension cables that have blown up, so, you know, I want to pay for quality so that I get quality back, and they didn't have that either, so, as far as like a shopping endeavour goes, it was fucking terrible, but I had a lot of fun, we got to eat fish and chips, and uh, drink energy drinks, and, you know, just go on a little little adventure. But back to Kingdom Hearts anyway, we've been beating up a ton of these standard dudes. There's also those unique enemies to this level, which are the ghosts. So I'll find out some information on those ghosts for you. See what we can find. This is me keeping a save in. Every so often I'm going to show you saves, A, to prove that it's on Proud, because you can see it says KHFMPR, which means it's the hardest difficulty. And also to show you the time, so it gives you a little bit of a target to, to aim for to keep you on track. But this is a boss coming up. Where's the fucking ghost thing? So it's called a search ghost. It's got 45 HP. Everything else is pretty standard. It drops large HP balls and MP balls. It's got a high potion, 2% uh, chance dropping, mega potion, 1% chance, and a bright gem at 4%. So it says, if you defeat the search ghost with a percentage attack, or while its beam is activated, HP balls times three of the large variety will be dropped. So that's something interesting to know. But this is the parasite cage. Uh, my strategy for this boss is to stand on the left side of it and jump and attack. Like, heal when you need to, hopefully time your attack so that you can tech it, but every so, o every so often, he just hits you. And I've tried rolling through its attacks, but they're really finicky to do. I didn't try blocking. I suppose you could try jumping away, but it's just... I don't like this fight. It's a fight I want to do more so I can try and learn it, so I can do it cleaner. But it's just its not a, an interesting fight at all. It's just a mash fest. So I'm, I'm not a fan. But let's see if we can find his stats for that first encounter. see what we've got. Ice Titan, Kurt Zisa, Cerberus, all sorts of buggers. So here he is, Parasite Cage. So on the first fight, it has 450 life. Yeah, 450 life it says. 21 strength, 17 defense, he gives you 500 experience. His attack type is dark, so if you wear equipment that defends against dark, you might get a little bit more resistance from him. He drops nothing. And it says here, attack its abdomen with a weapon when Parasite Cage is stunned. So what you didn't see there, guys, is if you hit him in the face, uh, every so often he'll he'll be stunned if you deal enough damage, and then you can get free reign on his stomach. But if you don't lock onto his stomach, the fucking auto-aim screws you and you barely hit anything. 
You know, he's Poncho all over again. We hit nothing. But it says on the second encounter, attack its abdomen with something other than a weapon when the parasite cage is stunned to receive MP balls. So that's quite interesting. If you need to get your magic back, there's a way of doing that. But the second battle, which we're about to do after I've jumped around this place like an idiot, it has 900 life. Its strength and its defense are the same. It gives you a thousand experience. It's still dark and uh, it drops some life and some MP. And it just says the same thing. Attack its gob when it's stunned. It's middle gob, that is. And we've now got the high jump, which I love the high jump. The only problem with Kingdom Hearts when you start again from a new game is you're so used to high jumping and gliding that you go to do it when you don't have it and you remind yourself of how shit that base jump was. But this place is great. And you might have noticed when I first started, I didn't even bother trying to get any of the chests. Even the chests that I could have got with my shitty jump. Instead, because I knew that the high jump was coming, I just waited for now. And then we can go back through picking them up at our own leisure and uh, getting Trinity Marks and, and all sorts of kind of things. But if you are currently farming, and this video is going to probably air before my, my synthesis guide does, if you're ever having troubles with drops, and you know where the drops are, you might want to look into the Bambi drops, because Bambi is a summon that you get by doing some of the pages in the 100 acre wood. And for most, she's kind of shit. She jumps around spewing um, MP balls, which is good for refilling your magic, and if you want to start spamming magic, it's actually a really effective strategy of killing enemies, because she refills your magic and you can keep spamming thunder or gravity or whatever you want to do. My big criticism is you can't use abilities when a summon's in play, so you can't just spam MP and do Ars Arcanum or Ragnarok or any of the good ones. So you're limited to just magic, and I'm not really a magic guy on these games. It's not my thing at all. So that's me trying to extend my jump to get on top of there. The jump here is doable, but it's tricky. And as you can see, I'm going to show you... Uh, some examples of me trying to step on lips and jump out and things, which you don't need to do. You can just jump from outside here and it will get you on. It's just, as I've said, the, the jump can be really fussy. Uh, like a lot of things in this game, the jumping is, is, is kind of bad. It's kind of dated and bad, but there you go. But yeah, Bambi is it's pretty, pretty interesting when it, as far as spamming magic, but pretty shit for everything else. But what does happen is there's a charge bar, and every enemy you kill, it fills up. And when you fill it once, depending on the area you're in, will depend on what item you get. So the first time, she might drop a potion, or something like that. And there's a percentage of what she drops, and there are generally like a few items. If you fill it a second time, an even rarer item will drop, or there's a percentage of it to drop. And then if you fill it a third time, you know, so on and so forth. And it's one of those things where, to get mithril shards, the best way of doing that is using Bambi. So through that same logic, if you're having trouble with another item that you know Bambi can drop in a certain area, you might want to use that strategy because it's so much quicker. But once you go through here, we go into this vertical room. I got lucky here because sometimes this room will be filled with enemies. I got the rare truffles. And rare truffles are a, a unique character that don't attack you. And if you knock them in the air, you can hit them a bunch of times, and the more times you hit them in the air before they touch the ground, the bigger the, the prize they give you. And there's a prize for hitting them like 300 times or something stupid. And it's it's really expensive too, you can sell it and get like 9,999 money. But I've never done that because the setup is, is you do something in Halloween Town, and you kind of bounce it against a wall and it makes it super easy to do, but I just, I'm just not interested in that. But this is the Parasite Cage. I'm still locked onto his face, even though I tried to lock onto something else. And you'll notice I'm losing an opportunity to deal massive damage, which is a big shame, because you do some serious damage to him on that, that, that moment. But things to bear in mind. This thing's going to spit poison at you. There it is. Poison is going to gradually drain your life. I think you can be poisoned by stepping in the water. I'm not too sure. Just be careful of it. And just be aware of this creature's attacks. It swings its arms, it does the poison spray. It does this kind of like ass swing thing where it plants its hands and it swings its, its its stomach at you. Now the strategy is simple once again, but messy. Just tank its hits, hit it in the face, it opens up its belly, beat up its belly. This is another boss I hope to, to play a little bit more and, and get 
a better way of fighting it that makes it look more fun than this. Because one of the major criticisms of this game, and an even bigger criticism of the second game, is sometimes you can just win by pressing X. And even on the harder difficulties, this can be true when you're damage racing. And that to me is, is really sad. It's not my cup of tea at all. And I know there are people that enjoy that. There are people that just want to sit back and turn their brain off. That is not the type of gamer I am. Like, I got into an interesting mechanics discussion to some uh, somebody who commented on my Killer is Dead guide. By the way, we just learned Leaf Bracer. That now makes Cure the most powerful move on the game. But we were talking mechanics, and he, he made something a comment along the lines of not every game has to be as refined and tight as a Ninja Gaiden, which is very true, but to me, if every game was, I would enjoy them a hell of a lot more, because the, the attention, the detail, and the precision that you get in those games, it generally means that you're not, you know, the mistakes that happen are yours. It's not the game fucking you, it's you fucking yourself. And when it's just you to blame, I have no problem with that. When it's the game to blame, and don't get me wrong, there's there's a distinction to be made here. A lot of people will blame games for their own mistakes. We're all guilty of it. It's quite innocent. But when it isn't the game, it literally, you know, innocently isn't the game and it's yourself. They're the ones that I can accept. When it's the camera or somebody hitting me off screen that I couldn't have physically seen at that moment in time unless I was being super defensive, I'm not a fan of that. But that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the guide, and you take care now.